Hey ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video. And in this video, I really want to address the, <laughs> the discourse in Black YouTube around Black male nerds. Um, so the narrative that they're trying to paint is that the most educated group of women somehow only want thugs, pookies, and ray rays. But ladies, I just want to give you... Um, just some background information. And I want to really share my personal experience with some of these black male nerds and really address their complaints and talk about how I see this situation playing out. Now, what in inspired this video? It really had to be coming off of South by Southwest my daughter and her boyfriend and their little business partner, whatever this business is they got, <laughs> wanted to go to the technology conference in South by Southwest. And I'm going to tell you something. The biggest difference I've noticed between the nerds uh, that are constantly complaining, the quote unquote self-proclaimed nerds of the black community that I hear complaining, and this group of nerds right here, Ladies, it's got to be the confidence. It is the confidence. These are some of the most confident nerds I have ever seen. I'm not just talking about, okay, let's just talk about my daughter's boyfriend, okay? This little boy, every day he walk out the house, he looked like who did it and ran, okay? And let me tell you something. This boy, I might question his fashion choices, but I never question that boy's confidence. Like when he walks out of the house, you gotta be confident in yourself to walk out the house looking that way. And then when I think about my daughter, you know, another, I guess, self-proclaimed nerd, this girl looked like she got dressed in the dark, did her hair in the rain and did her makeup in an earthquake. But child, they are so proud to be seen together. He is proud to be seen with her. Why? Because he is who he is, and he is so comfortable in his own skin. And she is who she is, and she is comfortable in his own skin. And they accept that about each other. They're self-proclaimed nerds, and they love technology and art. And they're unashamed and unabashed and unapologetic about how they appear and how they move through this world. They are clear in their ambitions most of the time. Um, but... I've got to say, that is the thing that is missing. I want you to really think about the level of confidence it takes. South by Southwest was always a music festival for the cool kids, right? It was for the rock stars and the up and coming. But now it's really been eclipsed by the nerds and their technology. I'm letting you know that nerds of other cultures have a lot more confidence and they also have a like-minded support system. So that's the really the biggest difference between black nerds and other nerds. Not saying that other nerds don't have problems socially because again, social awkwardness kind of comes with it. But at the same time, they're very comfortable in that. So South by Southwest wasn't my first exposure to nerd boy swag. I definitely can say that nerd boy swag for me Definitely, I started noticing it around Napoleon Dynamite. Like that era brought just about like nerdy, socially awkward guys up to the forefront um, to just be confident in who it is they were and to really make it a point to um, just be comfortable in their own skin and to live unapologetically. Let me tell you something. I may have not been the biggest, you know, fan of nerd boy culture, but I certainly had a vote for Pedro t-shirt because I really did think that what they were creating was a really amazing thing to be able to celebrate who it is they were and to grow in that confidence and to grow in that self-acceptance. I was in support of it. So, and I think a lot of black women are, we're in support of Men, or just women in, in general, are in support of men just forging their own path, doing their own thing, and coming to a place of self-acceptance. But when you talk about Black male nerds, there is a palpable insecurity. There is a constant, constant cry of victimhood. And that is not sexy to any woman, no matter what race, no matter what culture she comes from. Women always respect confidence. And black male nerds just don't seem to have that. And I think that there is a lot of compassion out there. And there always has been a lot of compassion from the collective of black women for the struggle of black boys and the struggle of black youth. 
so many times I can just think of women who just were trying to protect their sons, who were trying to nurture their sons, who understood the difficulty that their sons had, who were academically gifted in an anti-intellectual culture. But then at the same time, that anti-intellectual culture is a culture that they most wanted to be accepted by. So many times these educated lanes are not that educated. Why? Because they, they were always hiding their light under a bush. And I can definitely say this for my, my students that I've had in the past, also for my black male family members and a lot of my black friends who are raising kids right now, especially boys, that they're always wanting to hide that they're light under a bush because of fear that they're going to be ridiculed and ostracized by other black youth, particularly other black male youth in particular. So girls don't want to appear to be too smart so they can't get a boy. And boys, most especially, they crave acceptance from this culture more than they crave protection from it. So this is where you really see a lot of your educated lames are really not all that educated at the end of the day. And that also is another source of why they have no confidence. Because here we are as black women, we're, we were able to finish our degrees. We were able to capitalize our ambition. And the whole time they had to squelch, the, to, to squelch that ambition in order to be accepted. And then they still don't have the acceptance and they still don't have the success. So it just puts them in this really precarious situation because they've never really dealt with their desire to be accepted by other black men. And the fact that they've compromised who it is they are, what it is they wanted to be, never really utilizing their gifts. And then they blame black women. Let me tell you something. You know who doesn't like, also doesn't like confident, lack of confidence? Other men. Other men of other cultures, no matter what culture that is, nobody likes a man who's insecure, a perpetual victim, and is not confident. So when I think about the so, so, social romantic plight of the black male nerd, it really reminds me of the sitcom, The Big Bang Theory. For those of you who are not familiar with Big Bang Theory, it is the story of four scientists at a university that is somewhat like Caltech, so each of these young researchers slash professors um, moved to Los Angeles from their respective towns and cities to really create a career for themselves in science at this prestigious California university. And early in the episodes and early in the seasons, you see them kind of trying to live the jet set LA lifestyle, right? They're going to the clubs and the bars and the coffee shops, trying to pick up on all the beautiful want to be actresses and models and beautiful women that LA has to offer. They find themselves stumbling and bumbling through their dating life. And the, one of the main characters, Leonard, ends up falling for uh, an aspiring actress in their building by the name of Penny. Now, Penny understands that Leonard really is constantly pining for her. So she uses it to take advantage of the situation. Um, there was a few episodes where she borrowed money from him and his roommates. She constantly is eating over their home because they always are ordering food for her without the accept expectation that she's going to pay because she knows that Leonard finds her so attractive. Um, all the while Leonard is pining for this girl, Penny, she's parading uh, men through her apartment. Okay. So it's, she always is kind of joking about how promiscuous she is. Um, and then it's kind of like a running joke in the series. Well, eventually, as the series starts to progress, you see these young scientists really get their feet under them as far as the university culture and the community of other scientists that are in the Los Angeles area. And you see many of them start dating and being a lot more successful as they start dating more um, women in their in their circle in their um who really don't look and make fun of their socially awkwardness, their academic prowess, but actually think that those qualities and traits are endearing. So you see Howard uh, meet the love of his life and build a family with microbiologist Bernadette. You see Sheldon, the astrophysicist, end up coming in, meeting the love of his life and achieve his lifelong dream of winning a Nobel Prize. You see Rajesh Kutrapali, who was my favorite character. Um, you see him kind of do what the male version of Rich Auntie vibes was. You know, he basically travels and he has a very expensive self-care routine and he has a, a pet that he absolutely adores and spoils. So um, each of these guys kind of end up finding their way. And even Leonard, you see him date doctors, 
lawyers and other scientists, academics, PhD candidates, all the while pining for Penny. And you even see him even kowtowing and catering to Penny and her many loves and her many boyfriends that she keeps parading in front of him. Well, eventually Leonard ends up marrying Penny and throughout their relationship, you constantly see um, Penny's past coming back to haunt them as far as like ex-boyfriends um, who are out there being intimidating to Leonard. You see these situations where um, Penny wants to be defended by the masculine man that she used to date, but Leonard in his socially awkward puny arm stage really can't do that for her and it creates like a comic relief. We also see um, how Penny ends up leaving the acting world because she never became successful to go into pharmaceutical sales. And then she kind of uses her good looks and her charms to sort of flirt um, with other men. And that makes Leonard uncomfortable. And even more uncomfortable was the fact that she now out earns him, despite the fact that he's still the one who's paying most of the bills. And she's, and he's still constantly, she's still constantly asking him for money. So again, we see all of these awkward things because what happened was the other men kind of chose women who found their characteristics sweet and endearing, found a community that accepted them, where they could excel uh, professionally and academically um, and end up you know, kind of living and loving in that community. Whereas Pe uh, Leonard constantly has these problems with Penny. It makes for a funny show, but I really think that this is the problem of the black male nerd, right? They're trying to adhere to a culture that they're not gonna ever be really be a part of. So as opposed to um, looking for a dating pool among the most educated group of women, they're out here just trying to prove themselves to an anti-intellectual culture. Um, that's how Leonard, that's how Sheldon ends up with a partner who helps him win, win the Nobel Prize, and Leonard ends up with a partner that constantly berates and teases him. So again, I really feel that this uh, show is very reflective of the situation of the black male nerd. They always want the pennies. Ladies, let me tell you something. It takes a lot of confidence to bring comic book culture into mainstream culture. It takes a lot of confidence to be a grown man who indulges in things like Legos and expensive action figures and collector's items and to build a community around that. It takes a lot of confidence to uh, go to Comic-Con and these conferences around quote unquote nerd culture that weren't always cool. It took a lot of confidence for those men to pioneer and forge a path forward to create and to just be unapologetic about nerd culture. Also, I have to say that one of the things that's very disturbing about this uh, discourse around black male nerds or the quote unquote educated lames is the fact that somehow they have more virtue than the men who are getting chosen. Let me tell you this. Uh, if you ever read the book, Accidental Billionaires, it's basically um, about the rise of Facebook. And it kind of looks into like the debauchery and the salaciousness of these young men in the growing Silicon Valley culture. Um, and let me tell you, they were no more virtuous than a lot of like young athletes or young rock stars, you know? Uh, so the fact, it just goes to show you that they're the same part of my language, fuck boys once they get the notoriety and money that any other man would get. So to believe that these men are even more virtuous is even a stretch of the imagination. Uh, so again, um, the discourse around nerd culture and the fact that black male nerd culture hasn't really forged a safe haven or a really creative cultural outlet for themselves but rather uh, forcing itself to assimilate to an anti-intellectual culture that will never accept them. That's really the main reason for their lack of success, not just with their own lives, but with women or even making other male friends. So if black male nerds really do want to be accepted, to be loved, to be chased after, they really have to get in touch with their real problem and that is lack of confidence.
They also have to realize that they can't assimilate to the anti-intellectual culture, but really have to forge a culture of their own. And they have to look for community and create community surrounding that because they can't just keep playing perpetual victim. They can't just keep on indulging in this lack of confidence. What they really have to do is find the confidence to really build themselves to be what it is they want, to step into their own fullness, to create their own culture. And that's really not what I, I see. They can use this online platform to do it. And very few of them really do. So I do know that there are a few black male cartoonists and comic book writers and uh, movie reviewers and things like that. I think of um, certain exposures. I think of Jedi Mike Seven, who really like, you know, science fiction and technology. But again, that really needs to be the path that Black men forge, really about confidence and creating their own culture and not craving acceptance from the mainstream anti-intellectual Black male culture that's really out there. This is Mocha Mommy, and I'll see you in the next video.